Well, good morning, everybody. Well, Pastor David is finding that. I hope you guys are dry and safe and okay. I'm looking out my window at the snow. I, it's like I'm in Montana for half a minute there. But I'm glad you guys all made it here and no, hello to everybody help. who finds us eventually on YouTube. No. Good morning. <clears throat> and we'll start with our land acknowledgement today. The community of Christ Church would like to acknowledge and honor the land on which we worship. This is Kalyapuya land. The Adfalidae were the northernmost band of the Kalyapuya that lived along the Tualatin River in present day Washington County. Many of the Atfalidi descendants are members of the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde Community of Oregon today. We respectfully acknowledge and honor all indigenous communities, past, present, future, and are grateful for their ongoing and vibrant presence. We join with our indigenous siblings in caring for this place, the land that they call home. Thank you, Susie. I uh, also just want to um, say welcome to our guest preacher. Pastor Keren Rodriguez, who is here with us and will be bringing us the word. Uh, and in, in the meantime, I invite you all to stay muted and to sing along with our worship team as they sing, Here I Am, Lord. Oh, 
right, I invite you to uh, stay muted and join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading from the Hebrew Bible is from 1 Samuel, the third chapter. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is God's good news for us today, and now I invite Susie to unmute and read for us from Psalm 139. Yahweh, you've searched me and you know me. You know if I am standing or sitting, you read my thoughts from far away. Whether I walk or lie down, you are watching. You are intimate with all of my ways. A word is not even on my tongue, Yahweh, before you know what it is. You hem me in before and behind, shielding me with your hand. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, a height my mind cannot reach. You created my inmost being and stitched me together in my mother's womb. For all these mysteries, I thank you. For the wonder of myself, for the wonder of your works, my soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from you while I was being made in that secret place, knitted together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my body even there. All of my days were written in your book, all of them planned before even the first of them came to be. How precious your thoughts are to me, O oh God. How impossible to number them. I could no more count them than I could count the sand. But suppose I could, you would still be with me. Thank you, Susie. I now invite Pastor Kedden to unmute and to read from our gospel lesson for today. Thank you. And the gospel for today comes from John chapter 1. Verses 43 to 51, was it? Yes. And it is the following. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the land and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. 
Nathaniel replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. This is the word of God for the people of God. So the message for today, it's called come and see. Uh, Host has spotlighted your video for everyone. And we have the random voice that we get. Uh, this <laughs> Sorry. Time. So it's just it's just the perks of uh, Zoom worship. So I'm glad to see all of you here today. Um, and so what I was sharing with you earlier is that the message for today is called come and see. And I want to give thanks to my friend, Pastor David, for the opportunity to come and share the word uh, with you and maybe a couple of thoughts. So in 2006, my parents and I arrived from Honduras to Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, my father was brought uh, to the United States because he had this specific set of skills at this time to do Hispanic ministries for the United Methodist Church. In case you didn't know, um, I have been in the United Methodist since I was a child. So my dad had this extra metho nerd kind of vibe to him, I guess. And that's why they really wanted him in Las Vegas. So we came from Honduras and we migrated um, and all of us had this kind of culture shock as they called it. And it was perhaps the obvious things um, that make it very difficult for us to grasp this new culture. Part of it was the language. Others were the food, the traditions, the customs, and well, also credit. And I know you're wondering, what do you mean? Yeah, credit in Latin America, it's actually not a thing. So, you know, that you pay something that you owe, that was kind of something that was really new for us. <laughs> so anyway, however, in between all of these madness of trying to figure out this new way of being, uh, we were perhaps hopeful. Um, and even in these times of difficulty, of this place of not knowing what was going to happen. And yet in that breaking of the newness, not everyone was excited as we were to be in this new land. And perhaps one of the most difficult things that even we encounter was how the welcoming by others happened. I still unfortunately remember the words from this Mexican woman that was said to my parents while I was present. And she said something like, what good can possibly come from Honduras? Well, you perhaps can imagine how the story ended. However, the importance of me sharing this with you was to ponder and share with you that, yes, sometimes the places that God calls us might be difficult to exist or to be in, and perhaps people will not understand. The story of Samuel is a story of a young boy who was given to Eli to mentor, to complete as a matter of giving thanks for a promise made true. I often wonder how Samuel felt in this part of his life as a young boy. I wonder if he knew half of the time what was going on. He left his family and perhaps all he knew um, to be raised by this elder or perhaps some dude that kind of oversleeps at night and is too tired to understand anything. I bet Samuel at night was wondering, like many of us do, sometimes at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., about what the heck is happening in our lives. I mean, really, how many of us do that? I want to see a couple of nods here. Yes, yes, definitely. I do the exact same thing. And I know Dr. King also do it, but that's another sermon for some other day. So anyway, so here goes the story that Samuel was counting sheep someday, trying to fall asleep. And all of a sudden heard a voice call his name once, then twice, and then three times, and perhaps more. But perhaps the most important thing to mention here is not only that Samuel was chosen by God and that he agreed to follow a destiny full of purpose, but perhaps today we are asked to look in at a second time at this miracle that we have before our eyes. The second miracle that even in between this spiritual drought where the voice of God was not heard anywhere, God chose Samuel to bring hope to all and in this miracle ripples into the life of Eli, who perhaps it is too old and too tired and too forgetful to hear the voice of God even in his own life anymore, let alone the voice 
of God in someone else's life. I love this story. I love this story because Eli's life is just as important as Samuel, um, but because both were needed to work on the kingdom of God, both experience and bear witness to the will of God and chose to live in a different way, a life that was led by the divine, a life that perhaps there was not much slipping in into. Some time ago, when I preached my first sermon, and I mean like really some time ago, like Whew, seven years. <laughs> I chose to talk about young adult ministry in the Methodist Church. I was doing that. I was organizing for young adult ministry. However, that fact that it was my first sermon and I didn't want to do it was not the thing that stuck with me. It was actually a comment that a lady shared with me after worship. And she said something along the words of, I really enjoyed your sermon, but the reality is that my better days have passed before me and I am too old to partake on anything these days for some reason that stuck with me like really is there such a thing or way to be something too much or too little to not follow the call of the spirit I've been wondering ever since I guess not to bash anyone or bash her uh, who thinks that they are not capable to do something. But is, is there such a way that we could not follow that same call that is waiting for us outside of our comfort zones, over limits? <clears throat> In our second scripture, we have a rather similar exchange to what I shared earlier. Philip and Nathaniel are having this question about who is this Jesus dude and, and if he's actually legit. And Nathaniel says that, can anything come good out of Nazareth? It's kind of like saying, you know, can anything good come out of Honduras? Or perhaps as a former president would say, can anything good come out of a shithole country? I mean, we're familiar with the phrase, <laughs> right? We know the answer though. Hopefully we do as Christians. Of course we know that it can and it will come something good out of Nazareth. Through these stories, we see that God chooses his people not based on merits, not based on their gender, not based on their age or knowledge or socioeconomic status. God chooses his people just because, like Samuel, they're willing to serve rather than to be served themselves. See, siblings in Christ, then we must have our hearts open. And I kind of wanted to put that as a logo of the United Methodist Church, because I'm a thorn nerd too. <laughs> um, and I'm just teasing you all, Lutheran folks. Um, and ears to listen, right? And feet that are ready to walk that journey. Whether you see yourself as Samuel or Eli here in this story, only through this we are able to come to places and to be part of transformative work. Uh, work that takes place in the communities that it takes part also in ourselves. And so perhaps rather than questioning, rather than oversleeping, rather than trying to forget, we can also be reminded that in our spiritual droughts that we face, we can remind ourselves that God is skills, it still calls us today and every day. Doesn't matter where we're at in our journey, doesn't matter where we think we can or we cannot. God will continue to always call us through the end of our lives. And this is the good news for today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Uh, with that, I invite you all to... Uh, uh, to join some breakout rooms for some opportunity to share the peace with one another and to check in, maybe compare snowpocalypse stories uh, and also reflect on, on the message that we had just heard today. So um, I'm going to uh, send you into those rooms. If you choose to stay here in the, in the room with me, uh, there'll be um, some music and images for your contemplation. Um, and with that, I say to you all, the peace of Christ is with you. And also with you. Amen. We'll see you back here in about 10 minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. I invite you now to join me in the prayers of God's people. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the whole church, God of truth. Let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards, that all its resources and outreach bring hope and healing to communities. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Delight in the goodness of your creation, God of fig trees and fertile soil. Heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. Protect our forests and waterways and all the creatures that live in them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully, God of wisdom. Give them visions of justice and unity. Lead them to action that promotes equitable partnership and up uplifts those on the margins of society. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle, God of compassion. You know our inner hearts. Be present with any who are oppressed victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for respite or restoration. Today, we especially lift up those among us who are fortunate enough to have elderly parents and other relatives to love and care for in these days, and who are also dealing with health issues related to this stage of life. Please grant them the strength, compassion, and wisdom to continue to honor their parents and loved ones as they travel beside them in this final journey. Hold them all in your loving hands. Please help also help us, the rest of us, to reach out with warmth and care to those who are living with these demands on their time and energy. Help us to support them, listen, assist them in any ways we can. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give the people of your church the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world, God of unity. Make us faithful as we seek to build communities of inclusion and mutual care. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting God who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth, we remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints. We especially lift up today the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to embolden the church. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For what else do the people of God pray this day? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I have quite a few friends going through chemotherapy, and some are very fearful. So I pray for them through their fear. And Lord, I pray for my sweet friend, Karen, whose husband um, went home to you this week, and I just, I'm devastated for her. So if you can keep her, comfort her and bless her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'll pray for my buddy, uh, Roger, who is uh, fighting multi-year versions of a blood infection. And it's uh, so bad this time in the hospitalization that they don't really quite know what to do. It's, uh, it's a rare, rare thing. It's uh, life-threatening for him to be with Roger and his family and the doctors. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, let us pray for those with mental health challenges, that they may find some hope and care, bring patience to those around them, 
as they struggle with whatever their challenges are, with anxiety or depression or other mental health disorders. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear yeah. our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit in intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is uh, now the offering uh, portion of our worship. Um, the um, link for our giving uh, um, button on our website is now in the chat and uh, invite you to stay muted and uh, join in with our offering song. Um, and in honor of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. on this holiday weekend, um, we play um, the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. remix uh, video of our song, Hands and Feet.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as our Lord taught. Our creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now now and forever amen Amen. the gifts of god for the people of god this is the body of christ given for you This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power, for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. We have uh, a few uh, community news announcements to share with you. First of all, I want to remind you uh, of the opportunity to serve at St. Matthew's Lutheran Church Food Pantry on the second and fourth Tuesdays uh, of the month. Um, So the next one uh, will be uh, Tuesday, January 23rd, I believe, 445 to 615. Two to four people are needed each day. Our Faith News has the um, most recent uh, link to sign up to volunteer to help with that. And in this uh, time, especially after the holidays, we know the need is great. So we encourage uh, folks to to participate. 
want to remind you that we will um, be worshiping uh, via Zoom uh, next week as well at 9 a.m., January 21st. Um, also on that day, um, we invite you to consider uh, um, going to Spirit of Grace um, Church and uh, participate with the Queer Grace Gathering, a coffee house gathering from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, in honor of her 20th uh, wedding, or excuse me, 20th anniversary, ordination anniversary, not wedding, uh, ordination anniversary, Pastor Robin will be the one reflecting on her journey as a pastor and what it means uh, in this day and age. So I encourage you to go and support Pastor Robin and to hear her story um, next Sunday, a week from today, 7 to 8.30 at Spirit of Grace. Um, a week after that, on the 28th, Rainbow Faith Alliance will be uh, resuming uh, in uh, at Shepherd of the Valley, um, January 28th, 7 to 8.30. Uh, Emmett Fresh will be our short storyteller um, and uh, share his story of coming to terms with the fact that the conventional church has often harmed so many folks. So um, be sure to uh, put that in your calendar. I um, also just want to remind you that... Um, we're uh, trying a new thing with Rainbow Faith Alliance where we're going to take it on the road. So inviting other congregations. So if you know somebody in another congregation that would like to maybe host a Rainbow Faith Alliance event at their church, let them know and they can reach out to me uh, or to Elizabeth Hoffrichter and, um, and we will help get that set up. So uh, I encourage you to consider that. But we really want you to know on about January 28th is that that Sunday will be a hybrid worship, in-person worship at uh, Aloha United Methodist Church at 9 a.m. And then immediately following that will be the first of our community gatherings in our discernment process with Pastor Melissa Reed uh, facilitating that conversation. And there will be um, refreshments available and... Um, uh, and we, we will go till noon. Uh, so put that in your calendar. Anything, um, uh, Susie, that we should add to that? No, other than we really do want everybody to, to be there, um, if at all possible. Again, we will also have that meeting in a, in a hybrid format as well. So if um, you're not in town, but you still want to participate, we're going to make sure that that's um, possible for you to do as well. Um, the executive team met with Pastor Melissa on Friday morning and, and kind of went over what her thoughts are and kind of what the the tone of the meeting, but also kind of the, the, the outline of how the meeting's going to go. Um, I think it's going to be a really good discussion. So I just encourage everybody to come. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, there was something I was going to add about that, and then it just it just left me. So um yeah. Oh, I know what it was. Uh, so um, hopefully Tuesday, um, weather is still kind of iffy, so we'll see. But hopefully Tuesday, uh, letters will go out to the whole to the to the congregation to all of you about the gathering. Um, uh, that will also be connected to uh, end of the year giving statements, but um, that will be another reminder. And then our council, we're going to ask the council to follow up with some phone calls to encourage you to come. So uh, look for that in the coming week. Um, again, um, we're hoping the letters will go out on Tuesday. Um, the way the the way the freezing rain looks and when that happens could could impact that, but hopefully not. So we'll see. Um, but look for those letters and also for uh, folks uh, from the council to reach out to you to invite you to participate. So that uh, concludes our announcements. Invite you now to stay muted and sing with our worship team on our sending song. I will follow.
Go in peace, you are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.